What's up guys, Shane from Fiatic 3D Printing. So today, come on an adventure with me. We're gonna go ahead and build and try out this 3D scanner. Hi guys, welcome back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check out a 3D scanner that was sent to me by Banggood. They sent me the CR10 before to review and check out. I've done most of that now. And now instead of sending me another printer, they wanted me to check out some other things. And this is the first thing. Again, this is a DIY 3D scanner kit. So I need to put this together. So let's see what comes in the box. Once we're in there, we have a universal uh, to a ad uh, US adapter. We have four short threaded rods and we have three, two real long threaded rods and one not so long. And then there's two other boxes in here. Let's get these out. And that's it for the box. All right, so the first box, Da, 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 da. All right, it has a foam pad with a couple holes in the back, but didn't go all the way through, so that's good. I'm assuming this is gonna be the surface you put your item on. Set that over here. And then we've got, oh, look at that. These are all 3D printed parts. I thought this was injection molded. That's kind of cool. So you actually could probably just print this off yourself and buy the hardware. Yeah, so these are all 3D printed parts. That's very interesting. I was not expecting that. And there are quite a few in here. And this one is kind of terrible on the layer here. It was printed like so. You can definitely see there's some sagging there. It doesn't, I guess it doesn't really need to be perfect. This is more function and not purdiness, I guess. And since they're 3D printing them in bulk, you know, that's kind of expected, I guess. All right, in box number two. All right, this is the electronics and such. So... We have some laser deals, laser deals, uh, cabling, another adapter, USB cable, a camera, yeah, little camera. It's probably going to do our scanning. And it's a Logitech because here's the faceplate that came off during shipping. I don't know if that's legit Logitech, but it says Logitech. <laughs> and then we have. A NEMA 17 stepper motor. We have an Arduino Uno. And then a, another small board on top with a single stepper driver on it. Don't know what this other small board is called. Either it is an Uno underneath of that. And then we have other bits and bobs. This is a bunch of nuts, bolts, screws, Allen wrench, shank tubing. Uh, we have the power supply, which is 100 to 240, 50, 60 hertz, output 12 volts DC, 200 milliamps. And then we have some JSTs. So it looks like we need to actually connect, do our own cabling. Ooh, a great big bearing. That's huge, look at that. That's a huge bearing. That's pretty awesome. It's heavy too. Uh, and then we have some Acrylic pieces, two acrylic sheets, a stick, and a sheet. I believe this has to do with focusing um, and whatnot, but we'll put that aside there. And again, like some of the other things that come from China, sorry guys, there was no documentation included. I know I didn't receive an email, so I'm gonna pause, I'll be right back. I'm going to go online and see if I can find the tutorial on how to put this thing together. So be right back. So I sent my contact at uh, Banggood a request for the instructions. I guess normally they send it to you when you purchase it, but since I didn't purchase this, she didn't send me the instructions. And for this particular uh, model, there is no instructions on the actual page to purchase it from. So what I think we're gonna do is wing it. I think I can figure out most of it fairly simply. So I'm gonna just go ahead and start putting some of this together and see how it goes. All right, so it's basically put together now. Um, for the most part, I don't know how to wire up the board. I sent an email to my contact from Banggood and saying, hey, I didn't get these instructions. We'll wait and see what she sends back to me. But I just went off the pictures from the website, 
and assembled it. I think I got everything right. I did forget to use a lot of the washers here on these long threaded rods. Those threaded rods were a little bit almost rusty, so they weren't like the greatest condition. These ones were a little bit better, but not by much. But anyway, I figured out how to get the photo sensors installed. And the camera just sits here like so. I have the stepper wire, which I'm gonna end up zip tying to this just to clean it up. And like I said, they sent JST connectors and heat shrink tubing. So I'm assuming that I need to re uh, do this because I've got about two feet extra of cabling there that I really don't need. And the other thing is this plate, it matches the way the pictures are, but if you see here, there's three bolts that come through and the nuts are on top. Only two of them fit in the hole at any one time. The third one does not. So it's at an angle. I don't know if it's supposed to be that way. Again, I've never dealt with any of this before. So I don't know if that's how it's supposed to be or not. We'll just have to wait and see what they send to me. So what I'll just do is I'll end up just cleaning up the wires here myself and then waiting for them to get back to me. There's a ton of spare parts here. Maybe, I, I don't know. But yeah, oh, and then I put this piece together here. This does something. So again, there's no user manual or anything like that yet. There's not even software that I'm supposed to be using. And again, I'm pretty sure this just sticks to that eventually. So we're gonna call this for today and I will be back shortly for you. I'm going to keep this one video. I'll be back shortly for you, but for me, it's probably going to be a day or two before I come back, actually finish putting this together, and then we try it out. So stay tuned. All right, welcome back, guys. So it's been two days now, and I was able to get the documentation from Banggood. So great. I was able to get things moving. I was able to finish up the build. I was able to get the software installed. And then it took me probably about an hour or two just to get the thing calibrated properly. And that was all because I thought it wasn't even working. I thought I had a bad stepper, something was wrong. I couldn't understand, like I was communicating. But then I remembered Arduino powers up when you connect it to the five volt USB cable when it hooks into your computer. And then I was like, well, hang on a second. So I looked, there were no lights on the Arduino Uno that's underneath the driver board. So I checked the power supply. Lo and behold, the power supply was bad. Thankfully, I have an Arduino Uno that I have set up to work on the CR10. Took the power supply from that, plugged it in here, Boom, everything started working. Uh, the documentation was incorrect on how the stepper motor was supposed to be wired. The red and the blue, I believe, needed to be switched. Once I switched those pins, then it worked out great because in the video, it shows red, blue, green, black. In the documentation, it shows uh, the other way around. So blue, red, green, black. Either way, one way or the other, it was incorrect, but blue, red, green, black is the correct way to wire the motor for me, it might be different for you, but for me, that's what worked. What else? I mean, it's a little, I did try using it, so I'll have to look at some models here. All right, so I looked here, they, they did a potato when they did their uh, their file that they were, you know, checking out. All right, well, for some reason, OBS is not cooperating on my laptop, so I'm gonna do some screenshots here to show you. So I scanned this Han Solo bobblehead that I got from a loot crate like a long time ago. He's a cool little guy, sits on my desk. So figured, well, let's scan this. I mean, it's not too terribly complicated. These get most of the shape. Well, if you look at the file, and again, I'll show you a couple of screenshots here, it's all missing. Like his feet are not where they should be. And like, there's like an extra part. And then like in the middle of the file, it's like his head and then like a little head inside of there. I don't know what's going on with that. So that one was goofy looking. And then I did this little vase mode. So I did, this was a uh, PLA print that I printed a while back with I don't even know who it was at the at the time. But if we look here at the model, model has the same thing. So there's a little bit inside of it, but then the outside is completely incomplete. Like it got all of the, probably about halfway of each slice. So this is a, a six-sided model. Uh, I think it's like six-sided twist vase, what it's called on Thingiverse. It got half of the twist, but then the back half of the twist, it never got. So the model is completely incomplete. In with this software and then inside of it is like another little vase that's like inside of it because um, I don't know why and that's just goofy so then I tried something really simple like okay well if it has trouble with those two let's try something a little bit easier so now this one is a roll of painters tape that I had it's gone now but regular roll of blue painters tape threw it on there to try it out the way it scans, it takes what it sees because it's on it's at the downward angle. So if you're looking here at the item, here are the lasers and they point down into the model. 
And because of that, it catches the inside backside of the roll of painter's tape. So it takes that inside, you know, top probably 10 or 15 millimeters and puts that on the outside of the entire model, which is completely inaccurate. And then the inside of the model, I don't know what's going on with that. I, I didn't think it would get the inside at all. Like I figured just cut off the top. No, it does, it does, it did like the, the outside, just inside, but miniature, like maybe an inch instead of like the four inch or the three inch that is the actual roll of tape. Really weird. And then I decided to take, I have a Canon, one of my Canon lenses, it's back there now. I figured, well, let me just try this. It's a very simple model. It's not very, it's detailed, but not terribly. Like it doesn't have all these nooks and crannies that this does. I mean, I personally don't think this does, but anyways, like let's try something much more simple. Well, if you look at the Canon model, it almost doubles the way it looks at it because it's on the inside as well as the outside. So like there's like a little lens inside there, then the outside. And it's also a completely incomplete print, like an incomplete scan. Part of it is fairly filled in, but another part of it totally missing. Like, I don't know what's going on there. The potato model they used actually turned out like a pretty decent model in their, you know, example video that they did. It's using an older vo version of Horus than what I'm using because it says use the most updated version. Horus 0.2 RC1 is the most updated version on the web. And that's what came with the system or on in the file they sent me. But I mean, honestly, right now this seems super gimmicky. Like <laughs> I, I was expecting this to be somewhat decent, like maybe having to repair the top and the bottom. I'd understand that. No, I mean, this is super gimmicky for like $130. I don't really know if I would even be wanting to purchase something like this. I don't know. But anyways, I mean, I got it working. I probably maybe need to do some more tweaks. I'm gonna reach out to the manufacturer again and say, hey, these are coming out really, really bad. What can you, you know, what can you do for me? What, what am I missing in these calibration files? I went through all the documents you sent me several times, still couldn't get any better. Um, another thing to note, I'm really unhappy with the actual quality of the print. They're using a large nozzle, probably 0.3 or 0.4 layer heights in order to print this out quickly, you know, kind of like the, how the uh, Laws Bot TAS6 has the more extruder, and you can get big prints out of that. This uh, is definitely using a big nozzle, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, maybe 0.7 millimeter nozzle in order to get these to print fast. The inside where there would be support, they're not using support, and it looks just really, really bad. I had to drill a lot of parts in order to get everything to fit right. I had to drill out these blocks here in order for the, the 516 threaded rod to fit through it. Uh, I didn't have to drill out the base units at all, but I did have to drill out so where the lasers come in and then go down into the unit, I had to take a screwdriver and kind of push down in there to move any of the wayward pieces of filament out of the way, and then they would finally slide in. Uh, other than that, I mean, the build instructions were actually great. There's a great animated video that even came with it, uh, kind of like how they do like the CAD animations. That was good. Um, the quality of the prints are not fantastic. I'd say maybe six out of 10 if I had to rate them, but the overall performance was pretty shoddy. Oh, and then uh, these parts go underneath and these are what hold that giant bearing to the bottom of this plate. Uh, one of them totally snapped off as I was trying to put it all together. I reprinted all three of them. Thankfully in the documentation, they give you all the STL files. I technically could reprint the entire thing, any color I want and then use the hardware they sent. But anyways, it is what it is. It's the quality that they sent. And that's what I'm rating this off of. It did break, so I went ahead and reprinted that part. All the other ones are really strong. That one must've just been weak. But anyways, I reprinted those, did the calibration, attached the paper to this calibration point. And, but even this doesn't work properly. Like you're supposed to send it on the edge of the bed. Like so, if you can see that at all. Oh, let me do this. So you're supposed to place this calibration point or this print right here on the edge so it lines up. Well, that doesn't actually work. So it faces this way and faces the whole uh, unit like so. I actually have to bring it, oh, a good inch forward off of this round table for it to even work because it doesn't recognize it from the, where it's supposed to from this far away. Nowhere in the documentation does it specify how far apart this base unit from the main base unit have to be distance wise. It doesn't say that anywhere unless I missed it. So maybe that maybe this has to come closer for it to recognize this recognize this in the part here in the position it's supposed to be in. I don't know. So it, it just didn't work out properly. I was able to again once I finally figured out I needed to put it more forward. It then worked out, but I mean, 
what can you do? Again, this all seems really gimmicky. I hope that talking to them will give me a little bit better instruction than what came with the files because it was just bad. One last thing I did add, I did get a two pieces of uh, this foam board and I put it behind here like so and then the lasers are going into it like this and that way it breaks up because I was getting some of my I have my, umbra my lighted umbrellas right here when I was taking some video earlier and it was catching some of that and a few other things but by putting this uh, these two pieces of foam board behind it I eliminated all of that so it was just a plain black background some of the documentation they showed they had like a little curtain or something behind it it doesn't say anywhere that you have to have that but I found out I got better prints or better scans with that behind it. Even though the scans are pretty crummy, um, there was that. I haven't repaired any of these yet. I haven't exported them as OBJs and tried to import as STLs. I will try that another time. But uh, right now, it is just really, really bad scans that are basically unusable for the object that you're scanning. Even something as simple as a six-sided vase that is, you know, four and five inches tall. It did not even scan this properly. I don't know how they got that potato to look so good, but we'll go from there. All right, guys, so that's my first look here at this 3D scanner. This really isn't branded, except like Cyclops is another brand that comes under. This one is unbranded, it just says 3D scanner, something basic off of Banggood. Retails about $125, $130. Uh, if you want to check one out, there'll be a link down below if you want to. Again, I think this is pretty gimmicky. Uh, hopefully, in my later review, my official review of this, after I have some time to play with it more, it will turn out to be a little bit better. We'll see. Thanks for watching, guys. If you found this useful, whether or not to or to not buy this. Again, this is the final review, but we'll see what it is eventually. But if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If didn't, thumbs down, talk to me down below. Love to hear from you. If you want to support the channel, best way to do that, subscribe down below. If you want to support me financially, there's a Patreon link down below. If you want to support me without spending your money, down in the video description is going to be a bunch of affiliate links. Go ahead and use those. And if you want to watch any other videos, I've got a few tagged right over here. Check those out. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, happy printing.